moments ago into the flow of the Spirit right into his head. And so I felt he needed to sing that line one more time. We remember he has won the war. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew chapter 3. Beginning of verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you. Help me, Holy Ghost. He said, so why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now what you need to understand is Jesus has the Holy Spirit on him. Yes, Jesus is God, but very man. He came to walk this thing so that you and I will see. Jesus has the Holy Spirit with him, does he not? Amen. Matthew chapter 3 descended like a dove and settled on him. Then the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Amen. And the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the Son of God, jump off. For the Scriptures say, then the, then the enemy is going to try to use the Word of God back against him. Come on. He's slick, isn't he? He will order his angels to protect you and they will hold, up, hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the Scriptures also say. We get back into the New King James, King James Version. It is written. <laughs> Come on. You must not test the Lord your God. Go with me to Matthew chapter 4, 8 through 11. Next, the devil took him to a peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. Jesus done had enough at this point. Get out of here, Satan. What did the song in worship say today? There's power on my lips. Amen. Right, amen. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say, right. it is written, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Right. What happened? The devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. The title of the message the Holy Spirit would have me share with you today is simply this. Get out of here. Amen. Amen. Father, now lead us to your word. Jesus. As you lay foundation and as you build upon the sure foundation of your word now. Open up our hearts, open up our ears to what the Spirit would say unto the church. Lead us this hour. Nothing more than a vessel here. Lord, I have come in confidence that you will be. May your anointing, Lord, be all over your word, all over this people this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with me to Joshua 2. We've got to lay some foundation of where we're going today. We've got a lot of scripture. We'll move through it fairly quickly as Holy Spirit leads now. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Joshua had sent out some spies to spy out the land. Especially, the Bible says, Jericho. 
Joshua had sent out some spies. Before the spies went to sleep that night, Rahab went up on the roof to talk with them. I know the Lord has given you this land, she told them. We are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. For we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And we know what you did to Sion and Og, the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, whose people you completely destroyed. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. What is she speaking about? The glory. We have heard. We know that the glory of God parted that sea. We know that you haven't been defeated. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. We've heard of the glory. Now swear to me by the Lord that you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters and all their families. The established glory speaks to the harvest. What is she asking? We know, the, we know your God is supreme. We have heard of the glorious works, the glory that has been established in the earth of Yahweh. I need to be saved. That's what she's saying. The, the established glory speaks to the harvest. Let's look on in biblical model a little bit further. 1 Kings 18. 36 through 39, at the usual time, Elijah is facing off with the prophets of Baal. It says, at the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately, what? The glory of God was established before them. Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench and when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord, He is God. Amen. The established glory. God is establishing His glory in this call. He desires to do great and mighty. The established glory speaks to the harvest. The established glory speaks to the harvest. I believe that God is preparing and equipping the people and His glory is being established in and through this call as He sees fit at His right time. Amen. For what reason? It will speak to the harvest. Let's look on a little bit further in biblical model laying this foundation that the established glory speaks to the harvest. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They'd been beaten. They'd been stripped. They'd been tossed in jail. For doing ministry in the region. And it says around midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Here comes some established glory. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Shall we continue? But for the sake of time, you understand, and foundation has been laid this morning, that the established glory, the glory of God swept into that prison in a moment where they, come on somebody, where they were singing a new song. Come on. 
Hallelujah. And the Lord, like a mighty warrior, came out. Hallelujah. And His glory shook the foundations and the doors flew open. And when people experienced and saw the glory of God, they said, what must I do to be saved? The enemy would love to stop the establishment of glory of this call because he knows when the glory is established. Amen. Come on. Amen. At the harvest, they will rise up and it will speak to the harvest, which is already ready, by the way. Hallelujah. Now go with me to John 11. Let's look what happens to us. Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. Rolled the stone aside, Jesus told them. You know the story, it's Lazarus. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it aloud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And what happened? The dead man came out. That's how. If you are a blood-bought saint of God, and you have answered the call of the Holy Ghost as the Father was calling you home. The, that did, I wasn't in the tomb. Yes, you were. <laughs> you were as good as dead. You were as good as gone. Come on. But when Jesus said, come forth. This old boy that was drowning in addiction. This old boy that was drowning in all kind of sin. I was just as sure as on my way to hell. A dead man walking. But Jesus came. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he called me forth. Amen. And he gloriously saved me. Amen. This moment has happened to each and every one of God's children. Because you were a dead man walking. Amen. And Jesus came. Jesus prays. He says, you always hear me. He said, but I said it out loud for the sake of these people standing here. Jesus called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. He saved you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the purpose of Come on, what is the purpose of your life? It's the same as the purpose of Lazarus' life. Everywhere that you would go, that the presence and the glory of God would flow through you, that people would know Jesus. Amen. 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 It's the same thing. Amen. You mean I'm, I, I walk it? It's the same thing. Amen? Amen. It's the same thing. That The testimony. Everywhere now Lazarus would now go, he would carry the glory. Man, have you seen it? You see somebody just riddled in drugs and alcohol and they're as good as dead in the ditch and, and then the Lord calls them out and saves them and, and cleans them up and gives them a new mind and gives them old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then they walk among their community and everybody's like, oh. You mean this was the purpose? This is the, listen to me. You may not listen to you may not have a testimony like that. You may have been saved for 35 years. You may not even went down that road, but that does not exempt you from the same. God still called you dead man, dead woman. And you are a person that walks to carry the glory of God to every nation. And everybody knew Lazarus, man. Come on, everybody knew Lazarus. <laughs> I see you testify. Hallelujah. My sister. Mm. 
they called in the family. They had, they had preachers there. They said, she's not going to make it. But God raised and took death off of Miss Pam. And she's standing right here. She's full of the glory. They said, there's nothing else we can do. And she's here to worship this morning. That's the glory of God. If you need some reason to believe she was as good as dead. Thank you. But God, hallelujah. Everywhere Lazarus would now go and sit down and eat, people couldn't eat their meal. And does the word say that, Pastor? I, I don't know. I'm just imagining now. So I'm not saying the word says that. Can you imagine sitting down with Lazarus at a table to break bread? There's that dude that was in there four days. Yeah. We done wrapped him up, sealed him up, and cried all the tears. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. There's the glory. Yes, How did that happen? Why did it happen so people would know Jesus? Yes. Amen. You see, there's purpose that you carry the glory. Hallelujah. But what would the, the enemy knows this, folks. This is biblical model. The enemy knows this. He knew. This is New Testament. He knew what done happened in the Old Testament. Rahab said, save us. We done heard about the glory. So the enemy knew. Everywhere Lazarus would go now, he would carry the glory. What's the rest of the story? Then Jesus shouted. Lazarus come out and the dead man came out. This happened to all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Look with me a little bit further. Right here. There you go. Come out. This happened to us all. But then the Bible says this. His hands and feet bound in grave clothes. His face wrapped in a head cloth. Jesus. What you need to get right here is at Jesus' word. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. At the word of the Lord. That's all. Come on, somebody. Get this right now. Holy Spirit's trying to lay something down. That's all you need is the word of the Lord. At the word of the Lord, he said, unwrap him and let him. The enemy knows that when God called you out, a dead man, a dead woman walking. You are a dead man, a dead woman walking, and Jesus came and called you out of darkness. Amen. The enemy knows the next step for your life is to carry the glory to the lost, that people might know Jesus. He would love. He don't care that you come up out of the grave. He does. He never wanted you to. Trust me. He just said you'd be dead. Period. Right. But now he knows there's nothing he can do. My God, because greater than he that's in me than he that's in this world. Because when God spoke life into me, that was over. We got to remember, Tony, that he's never lost a battle. Amen. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is on the inside of me. Devil, know it. And you're going to have to understand it that you might as well quit barking up my tree. Because you're going to lose every time. He, he's a stubborn old man. Come on. But he's going to lose every time. Why? Because... God, does anybody get this right now? Because the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is on the inside of me. Come on, this is the truth of God's word. Devil, you can't get in me. And you can't make me do a thing. Come on. Devil, you can't. I'm going to speak it again. Devil, you can't get in me. And you can't make me do anything. You can try your best 
to try to get me to. You can put some sort of temptation in front of me, but I'm going to tell you right now, it is written. Come on, hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord today. Knowing that now Lazarus would go and carry the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the enemy would have loved to bound his hands, his feet, and his face so he couldn't get to the appointments. Come on. But at the word of the Lord, loose him and let him go. Come on. Get this now. This is something people struggle with as believers. At the word of the Lord, what does it say? James 4, 7. So humble yourselves before God. Yes. What's the key? Submit yourself therefore unto God. When you humble yourself, come on, submit. When you humble When you submit to God, it's at what? His Word. Yes. What do I got about God? The book from Genesis to Revelation. Does this make sense? Amen. Submit to the Word of the Lord. What was Jesus doing? It is written. You can bring anything you want to, brother, but it is written. And then Jesus says, get out of here. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. I'm going to tell you, there's too many believers that have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light that are fooling around with grave clothes. Come on. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Preach it. Come on. And why do you continue to do that? Because you haven't submitted to the word of the Lord. Oh, Come on. Hey. Either this thing's true and it's full of life and power or it's not. Come on. Well, I'm getting some funny looks. Man. I'm on, I'm on, Samantha and I said it about two or three weeks ago. I said, we're going to live by this book. We're going to die by this book. Amen. 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 Come on. Go with me to Romans 8. When he called you out of that grave. Amen. How do we know? When Jesus comes back and presents after the finished work of the cross, he, in John chapter 20, He breathes on His disciples and He says, Receive the Holy Spirit. When He calls you out of that grave, a dead man walking, and He speaks His new life into you, He breathes the Holy Spirit in you. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's called regeneration. That's called, come on. He breathes on you. John, John chapter 20, He breathes His Spirit in you. But then He tells them, you need to go tarry until you be baptized in the Holy Ghost as well. Come on. So you got the, the Spirit in you and all over you. Can somebody get it? Well, He said, you are receive the Holy Spirit, but before you go tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Amen. Amen. That's the full gospel. We're not going to go there today, but that's the full gospel. But you need to know when God calls you out of the grave that you receive the same, the Spirit of God in Romans 8, 11, that the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That's not, come on, that's, that's what the Word says. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you, my God, I don't have to do anything the devil brings to my doorstep. Come on. He says, I have no obligation. To do, I have no obligation. Come on. Somebody needs to get the word this morning. This whole idea, the devil made me do it, that's chopped, that, uh, uh The devil didn't make you do nothing. You chose to do it, but the devil didn't make you do it, blood-bought saint of God. Either the Spirit of God that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is inside of you or it ain't. Come on. This is the truth today. You have.
have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. Yes, we will struggle with the flesh. And the enemy will try to influence that flesh. He'll... Samantha will get up here and testify to you that the enemy tried to sink her life with Instagram. He tried to introduce depression. He tried to introduce anxiety. He tried to introduce all kind of garbage while she was doing her best to do what the Lord's called her to do, watching everybody else on Instagram have a good time. I don't get to go do that. I don't get to... You know what she, she realized? She said, that ain't nothing but the devil. And she uninstalled it from her phone. And she told me one day, you know, she said, I got so much freedom when I did that. Amen. Why? Amen. Because she quit, she quit messing, she quit serving it, man. Amen. Therefore, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. You either are or you're not. Amen. If you are a saved, redeemed child of God, the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. Period. Amen. So you don't have to do what your flesh wants you to do. You don't have to be a part of anything the devil brings to you. Come on, somebody. Because that power's never been defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we see this in biblical model now? Understanding what we know. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was using the Word. How do I get set free from anything that's trying to bound me? Get in the Word. What does the Word say about you? You're not a slave to sin. Come on. What does the Word say? Come on. Don't take my word for it. Just do what Jesus gave you to do. What does He say here in Matthew 4? Get out of here, Satan. Come on. Next the devil took him to the peak of a very hot mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said. If you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the Scriptures say. You want to know how to get the grave cloths off your face and off your hands and off your feet so the life that has been spoken to you can begin to mobilize in the earth as you carry the glory that people will know Jesus. You know, you want to know what to do? At the word of the Lord, you are set free. Come on, what did Jesus do? He said, loose him. That was Jesus' word. Loose him and let him go. Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God. What rescued Jesus right here in this moment? Come on. You say, gee, he's very man in the flesh walking this thing so we can see it. Amen? Amen. So we can understand. Jesus says, get out of here. The power of the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you coupled with the Word of God. Come on, somebody. That's what sets you free. Amen. Get out of here, he said, for the scripture's sake. We know Jesus had the Spirit on him. So, what do we do now, Pastor? Now, understanding that the power that's on the inside of you is the same power that overcome death, hell, and the grave. What do we do now? We get that word on our lips. And when that old sucker comes to your doorstep, you tell him who he is and where he can go. Amen. Amen. Look right here. When the enemy comes and tries to tries to oppress you and say you're sick all the time and you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't go and you can't be what God wants you to be, you know what you do? You get in Isaiah 53, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And by his stripes we are healed. Take that, devil. Amen. I'm not an old sickly somebody that can't do and carry the glory of God to this harvest. No, by the strength. 
of Jesus, I am healed. Hallelujah. Get out of here, devil. But in that day, coming day, he's trying to bring stuff against me. He's trying, come on. He's trying to curse me and accuse me. But in that coming day, devil, you can accuse me all you want to. But the word of the Lord says, no weapon formed against me will prosper. It will not succeed. Amen. Every voice raised to accuse me. Come on. Come on. You will silence. Oh, pitiful for me. I'm having a pity party because I'm a pastor of a church and everybody's against me. I guess I'll go eat some worms. I could waller in that mess or I can get into Isaiah 54 and say by the power of the Holy Ghost that's in me that everything that's come to accuse me, that God will silence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Does this make sense? It's time to come on. It's time to be washed in His Word. Come on. Romans 8, 37 through 39. Yet in all these things, come on. You're just a weak thing. You can do nothing. No, 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 no. Don't bring that garbage to me, Satan. You get out of here for it is written that I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Does anybody get this right now? Amen. Come on. He's never lost a battle. Jesus has never lost a battle. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers anything else you want to talk about nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. The Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. Come on, it's time to let that power come on. Come on, fan into flames. That that is within you. Come on! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do we do now? Just like Lazarus was set free at the word of the Lord, you too are set free at the word of the Lord. The enemy would like to come to you and tell you that you're a mental case. The devil wants to tell you you're depressed, that you're anxious, and you're anxious, and you're all of this. Come on, that you've got all this going on. But Second Timothy says that the God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and what? A sound mind. Come on, devil, get out of here. I'm not anxious. I'm not. I'm not. Come on, somebody. You either walk by the spirit, or you don't. This is called walking by the Spirit. Hallelujah. The same power that rich Christ Jesus is on the inside of you. Romans 6. Since we have been united with Him in His death, we, are also, we will also be raised to life as He was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. You just can't stop doing that. Devil, you better listen to me right now. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Amen. Amen. You better listen, devil. You better listen, demon. Come on. Come on. Come on. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves what? Completely to God. For you are dead, but now you... God. Lazarus, come forth, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for what? The glory of God. Sin is no longer your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Somebody get the word of the Lord today. Come on. Psalm 23. There's going to be days that I walk. Through a valley. Come on. There's going to be days that I walk when evil's trying to come at me. Come on. You, the Lord is with me. Devil, you might try to seek me in this moment. You might be trying to come at me while I'm facing something 
It's t it might be a loss of a loved one. It might be divorce. It might be this. It might be that. And you're trying to sink me in a dark hour in my life. But devil, you better listen to Psalm 23 this morning. The Lord is my shepherd. How many times losing a loved one or divorce or some sort of tragedy tries to sink people's lives, even believers? But I'm going to tell you right now, even though you may be even this hour walking through one of the darkest moments of your life, I'm telling you right now, the Lord is your shepherd. I shall not walk. He makes me to lie down in green path. Listen, devil! Get out of here, devil. Hallelujah. I'm fired up today. Hallelujah. Because I know what the word of the Lord says about me. Come on. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Listen, devil, my God restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, I know that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You can bring any evil you want to, but listen, devil, I'm putting you on notice. I will fear no evil, for my Lord is with me. Amen. Oh, your, wall, your rod and your staff, Father, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Oh, listen, devil, you might have come to try to get me out of the house of the Lord, but the word of the Lord has already been spoken to me, a promise. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on. Come on. But we got to keep rolling. Hallelujah. Listen, devil. Look at Psalm 37 now. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Who, who's been perfect since they got saved? I ain't seen no hands. Though he may stumble, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. You may stumble, but you've got a promise of the Lord that you will not fall. That's right. Listen, devil, I might be in a mistake in this moment. Come on. And you'd love for me to wallow in this mud and drown down here and not carry the glory any further. But listen, devil, I've got a promise. Though I might have stumbled, I've got a promise of the Lord that I will not fall for the Lord is upholding me with His hand. Amen. My God, I wish somebody hear the word of the Lord today. I was young and now I am old and yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for yeah. I wish somebody get the word of the Lord in. I wish somebody get the word of the Lord on their lips again and say I'm tired of fooling around with this mess. Listen devil, get out of here. All you got to do is tap into the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead on the inside of you and put the Word into the atmosphere in His face. Come on! All right, come on. Come on. Come on. And you too can say, it is finished. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Get up every day and worry yourself to death. You know, 90, whatever it is, 95%, 98%, whatever it is, things that you worry about, you'll never even come to pass. The enemy's just, do, just bringing stuff to you to try to get you to serve it and worry about it. Come on, somebody. What the Word of the Lord say? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Listen, devil, I'm not going to get anxious about what's going to happen next or what i got to do next. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going before the Lord. Get out of here in Jesus' name. I'm okay. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Amen. Somebody needs to understand that you become a slave to what you serve. That's not my opinion. That's the Word of the Lord. 
you become a slave to them. Come on. The people of God never lost identity. The children of Israel never lost identity. They were the chosen people. They never lost their identity. They come under oppression all the time. Why? Because when people would bring them something to serve in the land, they would bow to it and serve it. At any point in time, come on somebody, at any point in time, they can look at that thing and say, get out of here! Amen. Yahweh's got to come on. Don't try to blame things. Come on, come on, I'm getting somewhere now. Come on. You're trying to blame things on things that, that puts it out of your control. Come on, somebody. I can't control that because the devil made me. No, he didn't make you do it. You chose to do it. You no longer have an obligation to that mess. Come on. The word of the Lord is true. Let God be true in every man alive. I'm not going to worry about this mess, devil. You get on back on the road that you came in on and bark up another tree because it ain't working here, man. In Jesus' name. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Come on, worship team. Everybody, come on up. Get ready. Why did God have us in the opening passage of Scripture with Jesus in the wilderness? Because it's the biblical model. To see your hands on top. Your feet untied. The grave come like listen to me. You can't carry the glory where you need to go as long as your feet and your hands and your you can't even see where you're going. Right. right. But how is it that you get free at the word of the Lord? You submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How do you submit to the Lord? To his word. Humble yourself before God. Submit unto God. His word. His word. His word. His word. It's over, man. That's what Jesus was saying right here. Get out of here, Satan. Man, you're wasting your time. Because every time you try to bring something to me, His word, my, come on, the word of the Lord is coming right back at you, man. Come on, you, this is not your position. As a believer, you think anybody's drawn to that? Who, who wants what you got? I don't. I don't. But you're walking in the power and the presence of Almighty God. And you're seeing miracles take place. And God's using you to, to share the gospel. And people knew you were once this and now you're this. That's the glory being carried. People are like, man, something different about that dude. How old would you got, man? You see, his established glory, what is it there for? It speaks to the harvest. Jesus says, get out of here, Satan. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. You're mature enough to quit blaming the devil. Amen. You got that right. What do little kids do? Who did it? I, you go back in Samantha's classroom right now and some, some mess went on. Who did it? Wasn't me. You're too mature. God has brought you too far to say the devil made me do that. The devil can't make you do anything. He can't get in you. Hello? He can't get in you, blood bought saint of God. He can't get in you. His spirits can't, his demonic force cannot get in you. Oh, he can come to your doorstep and he can bang on your door. But you know what you do? It is written. It is written. I'm not a sickly old nobody that can't do anything. I'm a child of the most high God. I right, come on. He has saved me. He has put life in me. He has freed. He who Christ sets free is free indeed. Yes. Hallelujah. What does Jesus pray over his children? Not only then, but now. John 17, and we're closing. Now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. 
I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. Just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make, what does he say? Make them holy by what? The truth. Sanctify them by your truth. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is true. Just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Yes. I'm praying, listen now. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. Jesus is praying for me and you right now. Amen. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe what? In me. The established glory is for the hardest. You are the carriers. You are the body. You are the body of Christ. You are the carrier of the glory. Come on. Come on, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't get to the harvest if you're bound up. You've been, you've been believing the lie of the enemy. You've not been speaking the word in his face. Come on. But this morning, the Lord has sent me to give you this word. And once and for all, I hope may not be anybody respond. But if you need to respond, you need to get up and move. Once and for all, I'm going to lay this thing on this altar. And I'm going to tell the devil to get out of here. For this has been written in my life. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm not a slave. I'm not a sickly old nobody. Come on. I'm not depressed. Come on, somebody. That's not me. I've got a sound mind in Jesus' name. Devil, get out of here. Hallelujah. It's by His Word. Lazarus was set free at what? At the Word of Jesus. You are set free by the Word of the Lord. It's, it's, not, it's not that hard. He's written it. It is written. Look how simply Jesus ran off the devil. Look what he did. He didn't have to jump through 14 different hoops. He said, it is written. He didn't have to get a proceeding. Come on. It is written. So this morning, this morning, may nobody come, but this altar is open. You say, there's some grave clothes that's trying to bound me. But I know what the word of the Lord has said about me. Come on. And I'm going to walk out of this place today free. Come on. Come on. Father, now do what you've come to do. You have spoken. Father, you did this today from the opening note to the notes being played now. You have lined up the service in your way. This is your love for us. Father, right now, man, there's 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 religion and there's 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 things that that people are submitting to that are not of you need to submit to your word right now. There's things that they've picked up along the way, along the journey that needs to be laid down today. That needs to be laid down and let me come on. Lord, it's at your word today that they be set free. The Holy Spirit, only you can do what needs to be done in this place now. Father, do it now, we ask you in Jesus' name. These altars are open right now. People have already begun to move. You say, I'm going to lay this down on this altar right now. Now for good. Right now. I'm done with this stuff, man. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Come on. I want to lay it down in this altar right now. I'm done with this. Because the word of the Lord is spoken over me. And I'm free today. 
Come on, just lay it down. Whatever it is he showed you, whatever he's revealed to you right now, just lay it on the altar right now. Just lay it in this place right now. Hallelujah. Oh, there are others. Come on, don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your moment. Know who you are. You are to carry the glory of God to the harvest. Come on. Are there others today? Say, I'm not leaving this place, man. I'm not leaving this place with anything like that today. Are there others? Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, family of God. Come on, family of God. Are there others right now? Are there others? I'm just, I'm going to leave this thing here once and for all right now because Jesus said I'm free. His word says I'm free. His word says I'm free indeed. Come on. I'm walking through the darkest hour of my night right now, but the Lord is my shepherd. He's preparing a table in the presence of my enemies right now. Come on. Now are you walking through darkness right now? The Lord is your shepherd. All right, family of God, I don't want you to get up in anybody's face or their ears right now, but I want you to support them in prayer right now. Can some people come help us pray right now? Just support them. Can you be support right now? Come on, family of God. Don't just sit there. Help us out this morning. Come on. I just want you to do a semicircle around in support of these people right now, in support right now. Come on. We don't go through this thing alone. Come on, don't just don't don't disturb what they're putting out before God. Just pray for them in support right now. Let them do this with the Lord right now. That's who's going to walk with them tonight at midnight. You're not going to be there, but the Lord's going to be there. Come on, let them lay let them lay it down with God right now. Come on, people of God, pray for God just to give strength in this place. That people will walk with strength as they leave this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in the house today. Thank you, Lord, for your word is true. Thank you, Lord, for your word is true. Father, break everything in this place today. Father, break it now. Hallelujah. Father, they're laying it down. They're laying it down right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead, sing that, Jesus. before the Lord ever how long you need to right now this is you and God this is precious between you and God right now just leave it here come on leave it here leave it here leave it here you don't have to serve it any longer come on it doesn't have power over you you're a child of God my delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus.
But wherever the Lord can say today that the Holy Spirit in you is what empowers you to overcome. But you may not be able to overcome today because you don't have the Spirit of the Lord in you. Maybe today you need Jesus. Maybe today you need to take the first step and give your heart to Jesus. Maybe you need to give your heart to Jesus today. I want to open up this moment of this service before we go. Say, brother, I don't know if I'd go to heaven or hell if I took my last breath today. I don't know. If that question is in your heart, you need Jesus today. You need Jesus. You need Jesus today. I won't come get you. I won't give you some, some car crash story. Holy Spirit knows how to call you. If He's calling you right now and you feel the knock on your heart, why don't you let Him in? Why don't you let Him in? It's the greatest decision that you'll ever make. And it's the overcoming power that you need. Listen, if you don't have Jesus, you might as well be a dead man walking. If you don't have Jesus, you might as well be a, a, a dead woman walking. You need Jesus today. These altars are open. Look, we've all been there. We've all been there. In need of a Savior. He's calling you right now. She's going to sing this last verse. And it says this. At the cross, the work was finished. He was buried in the ground. Hallelujah. But the grave could not contain him. Hallelujah. He's alive and well today. And He's calling your heart. If you need Jesus, you need to move. I guarantee you, when you make that first step of commitment, He's going to save you as you come to this altar right now. He's going to save you. That's what He does. He's never failed. If you need Jesus this morning, why don't you move? Sing the last verse. At the cross, the work was finished. You were buried in the ground. But the grave could not contain you. For you wear the victor's crown. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. You have overcome. You have overcome. to be to the harvest. You're establishing your glory in this call. And it's for the harvest. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you for your truth today. And the washing of your word that's been in this place today. It's a washing word. We thank you. Now 
lead us from this place in the power of your spirit. Hallelujah. And in the victory of your word. Hallelujah. Father, protect your people. Strengthen them. Your provision will be there. Your mighty favor is upon them. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We declare it in the name of Jesus this hour. Amen. And amen. Be dismissed today. Hallelujah. In the presence and the power of the Lord. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Every heart.